Hi, welcome to another episode of the Dr. J. Bridge Show. My name is Jim Sternberg. I'm the host of the show. This is my co-host, Vanna. I mean, uh, Vicki. Thanks, Jim. Who's our guest today? Today, we're very lucky to have uh, Marty Bergen, a 10-time uh, national champion as our guest. Marty, you know, has been teaching here at the club. He also does uh, bridge cruises and teaches throughout Palm Beach County. And we're looking forward uh, to see what he's going to be presenting today. I'm so excited. Let's get started. Great. For this month's Bridge Talk, let's compare tennis to bridge. Nick Boletari recently discussed several topics. Number one, be steady. Players think they need a bigger serve to win matches, but that's not true. What they need is consistency. Pull the statistics from a tennis match. It's rare when a player commits more unforced errors and wins. You don't have to hit winners every time. Winning bridge is not making basic errors. It's making the hands you're supposed to make, being a steady player. Number two, get into good physical shape. Remember, bridge is a physical game, and it takes patience and endurance. You can't get tired. If you haven't gotten your rest, or if you've had too much to eat or drink before playing, that last hour is going to be tough. Are you stuffing yourself with that free lunch before playing? Remember, eating decreases the blood flow to the brain. I never eat before playing. Bridge events are won near the end when players are tired, losing their focus while the winners are still sharp. Number three, Nick said, play, don't pray. You need to make things happen. Unforced errors lose matches, but your opponent isn't going to make many if you just stand there hitting the ball back weakly. So it is in bridge. You have to make things happen. Don't just sit there waiting for the opponents to make mistakes. Become a more difficult opponent. Preempt a bit more, double more, mix it up a bit more, and you will become a more difficult opponent. If you do this, you will find that your opponents start making more unforced errors. And finally, number four, have an attitude. Everything being equal, you need to have a mental edge to be a winner. You need to play with confidence, even if you know you aren't sure what you're doing. If you're in a bad contract and moan about it, your opponents will defend better than when you play as if you're playing for over tricks. The great tennis pros like Federer and Nadal, they never give up. Likewise, the top bridge players, they don't give up. Remember, every winning session is going to include a few zeros. After a bad board, the good players focus on the next hand, a new one, which can be won. That's the attitude you need to have to be a winner at the table. Hi, I'm Marty Bergen. Nice to be here today. I want to discuss how to evaluate your hand correctly, how to know what it's really worth as opposed to what your friends might tell you the value of your hand is. Okay? When you started playing bridge, the first thing you were told was that aces were worth four, kings three, queens two, jacks one. And that's important, and without that, far fewer people would play bridge. But the reality is that although 4-3-2-1 is what everyone uses, it really is not totally accurate. Aces are really worth more than four. Queens and jacks, on the other hand, are really not worth the two and one they're assigned. In fact, to try to get that across to my classes, I refer to queens and jacks as quacks. Clearly a derogatory term reflecting the fact that these are not worth what they're assigned and these are cards that are not that great. Two queens are not as good as an ace, even though 
for a normal bridge player, two queens is four, one ace is four, what's the difference? So learn to appreciate and even love aces and don't get carried away if your hand has a lot of quacks in it. Also, it's important to think about intermediate cards. Which are those? Tens, nines, and eights. They're not high cards, but they're not the same as twos, threes, and fours. Okay? In fact, the ten is an honor card. There are five honor cards in bridge, even though the ten doesn't get a formal point count. Okay? So you want to be thinking about, is my hand worth more than its assigned value or less? And that should influence your bidding. All right, let's look at some actual examples. And the first few are going to have the same distribution. And we'll take a look at whether you should like the hand or not. Example number one. Okay. And my first thought when I look at this is, yuck, look at all those quacks. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six quacks. No aces and no intermediate cards. I don't like this hand even a little bit. Now, when you count up the high card points, you get 15. By the way, whenever you're counting up a hand with a lot of honor cards, particularly queens and jacks, it's easy to make a mistake in the counting. So don't hesitate to do your work and then do it a second time. 15 high card points and a balanced hand. So the normal bridge player says, well, I opened one no trump. Gee, that was easy, Marty. The problem is this hand is not worth 15 points. It's a pile of garbage. That's too many quacks are not worth their printed value. So I would not open one no trump because I don't really have 15 points once I evaluate sensibly. Therefore, I'm opening one diamond, thinking of this hand as being worth 14 or possibly even 13 points. Did you notice the queen jack double tin of clubs? Not only is that a pair of quacks, but those cards could easily be worthless. They could get captured by the ace-king in a flash. I refer to a holding like a queen-jack doubleton as a dubious doubleton. My editor likes that. She says, ah, alliteration, Marty. Good boy. So anyway, I immediately subtracted a point for the dubious doubleton because those cards are worth even less than the Queen Jack of Hearts, which I wasn't so crazy about. All right, I don't want to look at hand number one anymore. Let's go on to hand two. Ah, much better. Did you notice the intermediate cards? There are no fewer than four of them. The ten eight of spades, the ten of hearts, and the nine of diamonds. I like intermediates because they're assigned nothing, but these cards can frequently allow you to make contracts that you wouldn't have made if you had twos and threes. So this is a perfectly nice hand. Obviously, you're going to open one no trump. That's a no-brainer. But in fact, I wouldn't even call this a minimum one no trump. And did you notice the three honors in hearts. Ace-Jack-10-4, three honors in the same suit. When you have a suit with several honors, those cards are working together. They're increasing the value of each other, and that means they are worth more than what a normal person would think. 
what do I, what term do I use to refer to a suit with at least three honors and at least four cards? I call it a quality suit. And whenever I'm lucky enough to have a quality suit, which I don't get that often, I add one high card point to the value of my hand. So as far as I'm concerned, hand two is worth 16 high card points. No problem. No inflation. Nice hand. All right. How about hand number three? Balanced hand again, same distribution as before, 14 high card points only. But I love this hand. Why? The ace and king working together in hearts are much more valuable than if they were in different suits. And the same, of course, is true about the diamonds. I don't have any quality suit this time, but I love those pair of ace-kings. Those are four sure tricks, whether we end up declaring or as a defender. And also, did you notice the intermediate cards? No fewer than five this time. Ten nine of spades, nine eight of hearts, eight of diamonds. Those are significant cards. Okay? Think about intermediate cards, notice them, and appreciate them in addition to noticing when you don't have them, and that's bad in those cases. Okay, how about hand number four? Well, now we have 12 high card points, so obviously we're not thinking of opening one no trump. The relevant question is, should we open the bidding? This is a different distribution than the first three. Four, three, three, three. That is the worst distribution in bridge for taking tricks. It's the most balanced you could be. It's boring. Okay? I like long suits and short suits. This hand has none of the above. So, 12 high card points is normally enough to open the bidding. I would not open with this hand. And I'm an aggressive player. Okay? I don't hesitate to open a hand even without a million points. But I don't like this distribution. So, you've got to think about your high cards, but you've got to think about the nature of them. We love aces and tens and other intermediates. We have our doubts about quacks, and we don't like very flat distribution. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed our lesson. Okay. I hope I see you around Ballon Isles, possibly on a cruise. Okay? Thank you very much, and I look forward to being with you again. We'd like to thank Marty Bergen for his exciting presentation. Be sure to tune in uh, next time for uh, more uh, tips to help you with your bridge game. See you next time. <laughs>